Start of the 1900s, it was quickly made clear that it was going to be a century of vast growth. Horses were replaced with cars and gravel roads became paved ones. Millions of immigrants were arriving to America through Ellis Island and moving to the big cities, which at the time were New York and Chicago, to try their hand at living the American dream. These immigrants brought along to America their cultures and new idea of the term modern that slowly began to shape our country. The modern American architecture movement was introduced during that time to fit the changing needs and wants of the people and solve some of the problems created by the growing population. Now this influx of people coming to America created a problem within the major cities such as New York City and Chicago. There were too many people, too many businesses, too many cars, and not enough room. Those were the issues that got the architects to start problem solving. America was a strong, a big, powerful, and growing country, a place that made everything seem possible. Architect Lewis Henry Sullivan had a passion for skyscrapers and was often called the father of skyscrapers. In an essay by Mr. Sullivan, written in 1896 on his concept of skyscrapers, he said, It is lofty. It must be tall. Every inch of it. It must be every inch a proud, soaring thing, rising in sheer exhalation from top to bottom, without a single dissenting line. One of Mr. Sullivan's well-known projects is the old Chicago Stock Exchange building in Chicago, Illinois, which was completed in 1894. Another very well-known architect, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, who is known as the pioneer of modern architecture, had big dreams for skyscrapers. Mr. van der Rohe wanted to build skyscrapers out of glass, and he succeeded. One of Mr. van der Rohe's well-known designs built out of steel and glass is the IBM building, which is also referred to as 330 North Wabash, which is located in Chicago, Illinois. Unfortunately, Mr. van der Rohe died in 1969 and was unable to see this building completed in 1972. 330 North Wabash is recognized as the interior of the Gotham City Police Headquarters in the movie The Dark Knight. Sit down. The public likes you. That's the only reason that this might fly. But that means it's on you. They're all going to come after you now. And not just the mob. Politicians, journalists, cops. Anyone whose wallet's about to get lighter. Are you up to it? You better be. Because they get anything on you. And those criminals are back on the streets, followed swiftly by you and me. Another new architectural style of the modern American architecture movement was known as the Prairie House style, which was pioneered by a man named Frank Lloyd Wright. Wright was a brilliant man with a knack for creative innovating. He liked to design energy-efficient homes that looked as though they were not homes at all, but pieces of art. The Prairie homes were long with flat roofs and big windows lining the outer walls. These homes were generally built out of wood and had a very geometric appearance. One of Mr. Wright's most proudest projects was known as Taliesin West in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it is now a school of architecture which Wright founded himself. He describes Taliesin West in a letter to a friend. Well, I believe Taliesin West is modeled with due reverence for that higher understanding of man higher than the original simplicity of the barbarian, not copying his primitive forms at all, but consciously drinking the understanding that is love from the same sacred springs from which the barbarian drank unconsciously. The result would not be imitation, but inspiration now enlightened and furnished in action with more ample means to create significant symphony where before only the natural resources of the barbarian existed. Modern art feels the need of this inner strength which comes from within, comes only from this eternal interior inspiration. But man has grown weaker by way of the sophistication he calls his education, 
So the modern artist, among him, falls into imitation of the primitive instead of sustaining original creation from the same source. Of this imitation, Taliesin is not guilty. No, Taliesin is original as the Maya, but may I say, as a work of art, is as far beyond the primitive as our art and science of building is far beyond that of the barbarian. We are consciously aware of our relationship to environment in this our own time. But we shouldn't be too proud or we fall. Now you might be wondering, how can the development of skyscrapers and prairie homes really be considered a movement? So please, let me explain it to you. A movement is when a group of individuals come together to share their ideas, whether it be scientific, technological, artistic, or etc. And then form those ideas into actions that will change the way society interprets those concepts. The modern American architecture movement was a movement for more modern and artistically designed and innovative buildings using untouched materials such as metals, glass, and other things. This movement fits my definition of a movement because architects in America realized that, that since America was going through such a drastic change, the buildings should as well. They had ideas for buildings that would reflect more of this new American culture and less of the older European culture. The modern American architecture movement changed the way society, especially architects, viewed the structures around them. The buildings became not just buildings, but systems of artistic experimentations. The architects want to make things bigger and better, but still seem beautiful and sophisticated. This new form of architecture forever changed the way people in America viewed the cities that surrounded them. It came out of my uh, system. It's over. It's not my native land, but it means more to me than not my native land. It means more to me than my native land.